Ah. But, I don't know, it was kind of a uh, neat putting on that World War One uniform. It was just, it was just a fun experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, huh. trousers were loose in the uh, hip, but, you know, other than that, it was... Tied at the bottom, loose well. at the top. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it is definitely a sturdier uniform. They don't make clothes like that now. Oh, that no, I, I mean, because now they wash them regularly and have, like, more transportable yeah. stuff. But I like the pinstripe lining inside of it. <laughs> well, they're definitely durable. They're made to last. I mean, you're fighting a war. You don't want your uniform to tore. Tear. True. Tear. Yeah. But back then, you I would assume you could only transport so much versus now you can transport so much yeah. more. Yeah. Well, one of the interesting things is that I mentioned how we found a bunch of, like, old pictures and stuff of theirs. And one of them is, like, a picture of a family who nobody knows who they are in the family. It's just, like, this random family, and nobody knows who they are. And the weird thing about it is that there's pictures of the family, like, growing up. Like, That's there's weird. pictures of them with, like, two kids, then the kids are adults, then the, uh, adults are old. Ow. Weird. No one knows who they are, and unfortunately, the only people who would know who they are are currently dead. Because <laughs> we got the uh, pictures because they had died. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, she was 93 and ready to go. So, eh, it's hard to feel too sad about it. I mean. I have gotten a very, some very good advice from some of my, um, relatives, which is, don't get old, it sucks. I've gotten the same advice from my relatives. Our relatives must be related. Or it's just a good idea, because getting old sucks. But, um, yeah, no. Um... Ah, what do I, of course, what? when the podcast starts, we run out of Exactly, that's what great. I'm thinking is like, we've already talked about we, it. We, we, we've we talked, we've everything. exhausted all the other things. We covered everything. Hey, True. Let's go, he wins. But, ah. um, war, like, I, I am not a war man. I don't like conflict whatsoever, but, like, history coming from you and some other people, I think is really interesting, because my grandpa he he was a vietnam vet but he has about he has i think five like entire bookshelves of war books about wars wow. and different of like stuff and he is so just interested in that and we can talk for hours yeah. well, well, it's kind of neat um one of the uh, I, I i've gotten some other d different uh military equip garb from other m members of my family like uh my this time instead of a great great grandfather it's just a great grandfather who was a uh he, he was a uh co count combat airplane pilot in the air force oh. and so we have like his flight boots and his flight goggles and his flight helmet somewhere though i'm not sure where that is hmm. Hmm. one of my great uncles has a lot of his uniforms i, I so I oh, know. I never, I, I never really got to know my great grandparents too well. They were a lot of them were alive when I was little, but a lot of them died by the time I was six. Oh, so I, ne I never so got you to meet a lot of. Air I knew them. Yeah, I knew them, but I, 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 I met them. I, I'll say that I didn't know them, but I met them. Okay. Yeah. It, it's interesting to hear about. Uh, one of my relatives, one of my great uncles, he he was talking about his um. He was ta he was telling stories about his father, and he said, you know, he was, he was a just a tough as nails, man from like a British Columbia, Canada, you know, um, smoked every day of his life, drank two oh. shots of whiskey every day of his life, uh, lived his, out, outlived his wife who did yoga, tai chi, ate healthy. He, he, I'm pretty sure he said something like along the lines of, it's not fair. She did everything right. So. Dude, 
I, that's just, like, I hate to sum it up to it, but that's kind of just life where you can do everything right yeah. and still just die. End, it, it happens. Do worse. He really hated being old. It really uh, grinded him. I mean, I assume, considering he also smoked so many cigarettes and did a lot of yeah. alcohol. Well, you know, you know, when you get old, you lose the ability to, you know, use the bathroom effectively. Oh, that was his so, biggest pet peeve? Yeah, so he had to have his son's change him, and, you know, he's a manly man. Yeah, exactly. Guy, and he, he hated it. And one time, and, you know, he started to get stubborn about it. And one time when, you know, his sons went over, he said, no, it's not happening. You're not going to do it this time. And they said, look, you know what? We're gonna eat lunch because we're hungry, but we'll be back and we'll do it then. So they went, they ate lunch, they came back, he had died. You're joking. Nope. That That's how he died, he, refusing to get changed one more time. That Did it, is... He, he, was a, he, was a re, he was true to his guns. He didn't want to do it, so he didn't I, do it. I, like, admire that. Like, that's horrible. That's, that's how he died. But that's... Still pretty damn funny. <laughs> yeah, he um. I remember one of one of the interesting, one of the actually sad saddest things apparently that he said was that he he was glad his um wife died first, so she didn't have to live live with the grief he did. Mm. It, it was just, I don't know. His life was interesting to hear about. He was a uh, he worked in wor bombers in World War II. Oh. So he 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 was a he was a very interesting man. I never knew him, but hearing stories about him is interesting. Yeah. So. Of course. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Family stories are always interesting, but I, I'm convinced my family's pretty weird. Like I, one one of the stories that always struck me as odd Just is that you know my um. My great grandparents were like engaged, right? So, you know, they're ready to get married and they're just, it's Christmas time. They're walking around, they're looking at all the pretty lights at, that p people have on their houses. And then they look in one house and it has really nice lights. And they, and then they knock on the door and ask, hey, can we get married here? <laughs> back in the day, man. That's, that's such a like big, back in my day, we went to go ask people if you can get married in their house. They did it just because they liked their Christmas lights. They thought they'd look nice in the photographs. Did they actually get married there, or were they like, what? Yeah, they did. That, that's where they got married, in some strangest houses, because they had nice lights. That is... That's something you'd see in, like, a Hallmark movie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I guess because all of those Hallmark movies are made by old people. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Secretly, every old person has gotten married in somebody else's house. It's house because they had nice Christmas lights. It's probably true. Uh, conspiracy confirmed. Next question. Oh, that just that just makes me think about like somebody put together like the timeline of Earth con according to ancient aliens. <laughs> that was a great video to watch. Ancient aliens is such a s stupid thing. Um. I was, I'm just gonna go on a whim and say it's about ancient aliens. Yeah, well, the whole thing about ancient aliens is basically saying that humans have done nothing original, and everything that they have done, it's because of aliens. The pyramids? Nope, it wasn't them. Sorry, man. Yeah. Any uh, Hindu temple or neat cathedral? Yep. Stonehenge? Yep. Easter Island? Yep. Language? Yep. Writing? Yep. Finding we... gold? Yep. Was there like any reason for building Stonehenge? Was that ever found? Uh, no, I it's like probably, her... it's probably a religious site of some sort, but it's not really Religion known. no longer is followed, I, obviously. N not, not for a very long time. I mean, that's the be, thing but... I find, that's the thing I find interesting is that throughout history, there's a lot of what mm, some people would call colonizers. It happened uh, a lot. The Spanish Inquisition. Well... The, the interesting thing is that a lot of colonizers, there's like what happened is that they colonized so long ago and so effectively that they're the people who existed before just aren't remembered like um 
the uh what's it called like ho like uh indonesia uh, like indonesia was heavily colonized by the austronesians the native population of indonesia was subjugated by the austronesians who are now the majority of the population like indonesian is an austronesian language they conquested so hard that they destroyed the native culture and that happens all over history like everywhere all the time huh i it, <laughs> that's something you don't really think about eh yeah it, it wasn't just europeans it happened everywhere because everyone wants everyone else's stuff that's how things have been through for all of history <laughs> Ah, land, power, that's just... Well, <laughs> you know, w one of the things is that you, um... W one of the things that I thought was interesting is that in very ancient societies, living in a town sucked. Oh, because... yeah, because you were, you were ruled by someone, and yeah, you were kind of well, their slave, I assume. Yeah, well, what, what a lot of ancient societies formed around uh, rivers... Right, because river brings water, and whoever water and water whatever. grows, wa water grows food, water f and water fuels humans, because humans need water. And what they would do is they'd dam it, they'd build a dam, See? and so they now they control the water, and so now the people have to listen to them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how a lot of ancient cities started. You'd b better off being a hunter gatherer. True. I feel like uh, out of that... all older civilizations, Native Americans are pretty high up there for, like, life or, like, well-being. Well, not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, t t taking my tribe for an example, our diet wasn't the best. Oh. Uh, one, one well, of where were you guys, like, originally stationed? Or... My, my tribe is uh, from northern california so the sierra nevada mountains the mountain maidu so the sierra nevada mountains um are a pretty major mountain range in uh california it basically ba makes up the uh california nevada border hmm. but um what one of the staples of our uh of the diet was acorns and the thing about acorns <laughs> is acorn is the food that you eat when you have no other food to eat oh yeah they they don't taste good. They um, preparing them is long and cumbersome. And it's you don't it, get. Much what nutritional value nutrition. do they have? The, the, they're pro well, nuts are very nutritional. But the big thing about acorns is that acorns um, have cyanide in them, so you have to wash them very carefully to mm. get rid of it. And so the Maidu tribes did do that. There's an entire process to making it. I kind of know the process, but obviously I've never done it. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, they ate other things like, uh, obviously things like deer and salmon, uh, rabbit, stuff like that, you know. But, you know, that, that's the thing, is that their diets weren't the best. I mean, they weren't bad diets, but they weren't good diets. So. Yeah. A, a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, I do agree with you, though. I do find nat nat uh, native societies very interesting. Like, there was a the ancient uh, Mississippian city of Cahokia. It existed um, in, like, the year 1100 or something like that. And at, it, at, its largest, at its largest size, it surpassed contemporary London in size. You're joking. Wow. Like, current? I, no, I... Co contemporary. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Concurrent London. London at the time in size, yeah. which is still a feat because yeah, it's um, a tribe and they don't have major like cities and stuff. Yeah, Cahokia was like the, it was the center of the Mississippian culture, which the Mississippian culture is like what a lot of modern cultures are descended from, like uh, Creek Nation. I think the Cherokee can tie back their heritage to the Mississippian culture. Mississippi oh. went everywhere. Oh, well, the Missy, again, like you said, water brings crops and yeah. water brings humans, so. Yeah. Well, oh, that's the thing I think is funny is how a bunch of uh, the states are named after tribes is, um, you know, there'll be a tribe and the, Euro and the Europeans will contact them and then the tribe will live on a river, right? Because river brings food and water. Mm -hmm. And so the river will be named after them and then the, and then 
if it's a major river, then the territory that and then the territory will be named after the river in the area, and that's why a lot of states are named after tribes. Such as Mississippi, I'm assuming is one yeah, of them. Yeah, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kansas, uh, I think Alabama, Min uh, Connecticut, um, just a lot of them. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head, because it is quite a bit. Yeah. I think Alaska is as well, but that's kind of a different thing. Yeah. I think Alaska is named after the Alouettes from the Alouette Islands, but that's a that's a whole other thing. I feel like I'm going off on a bunch of tangents. Nah, th that's what the podcast is for, man. Yeah. Um. Oh, that makes me think of another thing. Oh my um, god. <laughs> I, I have a lot of things that come to mind when I start talking. Of is course. that it, it's kind of interesting, but um. So, obviously, uh, the modern Native American populations are descended from Asians who migrated across a ancient land bridge. Maybe Ice Bridge, actually. But they migrated here. But uh, what most people don't know is that there are actually two waves of migration from Asia. So, the first wave sub is what most Native Americans tie their heritage back to. You know, like, all the way back from, you know... America to all of South America, all that. Mm -hmm. But um, there was a second wave that arrived much later, and they are the uh, ancestors of the uh, uh, Inuit peoples, or U Inuit and Yupik peoples are the are uh, descended from a Asian people who came later, and that's why um, if you look at uh, Inuit people, they look much closer to Asians than other Native Americans because they are more closely related. Because they arrived yeah. later. Which is just something I find interesting. Um, but, you know, the history of Ameri of the Americas is definitely an interesting one. Um, uh, even before contact. The, the sad part about it is that most tribes didn't have writing. Or most tribes or nations didn't really develop writing. Yeah, because, I mean, they didn't specifically really need it. Yeah. I mean, if you have oral traditions, oral traditions are strong and can go very far, so why do you need to write? That's stupid. Exactly. Um, but, you know, tribes did develop writing, like, uh, the Mayans had writing, the Aztecs had their writing, stuff like that. A lot, a lot yeah. of the civilization was around Mexico, which is, I think is kind of funny. Mexico is the most developed part of, uh, North America. <laughs> Not to, like, disappoint you, but most of my, like, history of a lot of places comes from the singular Bill Wirtz video, History of the Entire World. Mm, that's like, fair. I mean, it doesn't go super in-depth about everything, but it gives you just a general about everything. Yeah. So, I... <laughs> well, a, ge a general... Having a general about everything is having a specific... Is better than having specifics of nothing. Exactly. Um... A little about a lot but uh the uh interesting thing well th the thing about um the aztec empire is even by the time the spanish arrived the aztec empire was on the verge of collapse because the the aztec just didn't have the uh cultural cohesiveness that they needed to manage their keep a large empire like they had Ah. So, you know, um, obviously, the 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 uh, Aztecs were very warlike people. Their patron god was their war god. Yeah. Who guided them to their home at Lake Texcoco in their traditional narrative. Um, but um, they introduced some. So obviously, they go out and conquer a bunch of territory. And, and these people are not very happy about being conquered, and that's something that people won't tell you. But um, a lot of the uh, a lot of the regions of of the Aztec Empire sided with the Spanish because they didn't like the Aztec Empire and wanted to see it collapse. That is, yeah, that's something they don't tell you. Uh, another thing they won't tell you is that the Cherokee Nation sided with the Confederacy in world in uh, the Civil War. 
I have no comment on that. I know very little about that. Yeah, well, the, the Cherokee Nation very much uh, westernized very early, and um, they 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 made it so their economy was structurally required on slaves of African slaves. Oh, like, that's they a poor it. business venture. Yeah, <laughs> well, so did most of the South, right? Of course, yeah. So, um, they made their societies, like, need slavery, so they had to fight on the side of the uh, Confederacy to preserve their nation and its cohesive structure. Mm -hmm. So, th that's something they won't tell you, but it, it is true. Now, to be fair, most, uh, a lot of, it, that event actually split the Cherokee tribes, with some siding with uh, the Union and some with the Confederacy. But that's just an interesting piece of uh, history that isn't very well known, which I think it should be. Um, yeah. I'd, I've never been a man of U.S. history. I have never found, like, super interest in it. Th that's fair. I, I don't... I, I, I mainly find history about tribes interesting. I don't find United States history that interesting. No. Like, definitely an interest in it, but... A lot of it of is my... wars from, like, yeah. that's what I sum it up to, is a lot of wars. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, America conquested their way across a continent. Exactly. exactly. Manifest destiny and everything. Yeah. And, you know, and a, a lot of it was what was better for their people because uh there was a lot of arable and farmable land in uh the great plains specifically where which coincidentally a lot of tribes lived in because there was a lot of arable and farmable land there gee i wonder that's a crazy concept yeah i know it might it's crazy that the uh, tribes lived in places that were good to live in but the whole mississippi uh river basin is the center of america everything else is a addition like, the Mississippi River, like, is just the economic hub of America. I mean, Pretty much. boats fl flow up and down the Mississippi, and it connects most of the major cities, like, De like Des Moines and all of these middle states connect to the... Like, you can go from the Gulf, like, Sorry. through connections through the Mississippi, you can go from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Montana. You're joking. No, I'm not. All the way through Missi the rivers connecting the Mississippi. That That's why the Mississippi Basin is so crucial. There's so many rivers that connect to it, and you can go through most of America. You Just through the Mississippi rivers. Like, my, my dad's been to, you know, state, like, uh, cities that are on the Mississippi. And you see these huge barges just go up and down the Mississippi carrying cargo inland. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, I've seen very few barges since I've never been to Mississippi, but I was in Montana and I saw one. And yeah. Yeah, they carry just about, like, everything. Yeah, and exactly. So that that's why uh, Mississippi is regarded, the Mississippi River is the center of America, because you can just go anywhere through Mississippi. And since it's a river, you can take a boat up it and Which carry is... a lot of supplies. It's just a really great it's basin efficient. to sail up and down yeah <laughs> it's it's just a great thing a and everything else is a bonus really yeah. like you have to think about it um california and the pacific northwest are on the other side of um mountain ranges like the rockies for uh the pacific northwest and the sierra nevadas for california so they're not accessible by um hold on <laughs> They're not accessible by river access from Mississippi. But they have their own benefits. Like, uh, Pacific Northwest obviously has great lumber. Oh, yeah. And, we have amazing lumber. Yeah. And uh, California... Well, initially, the rush of California was the large quantity of gold in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. The gold... Was that the gold rush? Gold rush, think? yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, gold is a great way to get rich. Of course. So, aren't there, like... I don't understand, like, eating gold. 
like i understand like to flex wealth but it just goes straight through you it doesn't add anything to the food it doesn't but it's just a sign that you're wealthy that you can afford to buy put gold on your food i know (laughs) because i see it in like all of the mr beast and like really big videos i'm like i well it's just another symbol of being wealthy i mean there's a lot of them one of my one of my favorite facts about history is that for a lot of the middle ages being uh fat was oh that was a good thing yeah yeah because being fat meant you could feed yourself well so like that that was what was desired was Mm -hmm. being able to feed yourself which okay yeah to be fair i would like it if i could feed myself of course (laughs) But, yeah, I don't know. American history is interesting. It's not the most interesting, and I'm definitely more interested in the uh, pre-European American history. But, I I don't know, I still enjoy general American history. Yeah, of course. I mean... I I thought it was interesting to uh, hear about the history of Corasso. He was a, uh, cat... He was the, uh emperor of a uh of the sassanid empire which was an ancient iranian empire he, there i heard a kind of an interesting story about Corasso. um he, so there was a very popular movement uh in iran at the time called founded by a man named mazdak and his belief was is now called mazdakitism but whatever so the Maz- so the Mazdakites believed in things like equality amongst classes, equal distribution of food. I swear I've heard this before. Um, so this is just communism. Yeah, Push but mark? in but in eighth century Iran. <laughs> uh. But uh, but um, uh, so Carasso hated Ma- Mazdak and his and his teaching. So um, he did this very interesting thing where he invited all of the highest ma- supporters of the Mazdakite religion to hang out, in which he had them all slaughtered in a garden, and then he ha- hung their bodies up, and then he invited Mazdak himself to see, before hanging him and shooting him with an arrow. Man, oh, history's boy. just fun. There's this, uh, I don't, I couldn't tell you exactly where it was, but there's this huge, like, one of the biggest slaughters of human history in Africa. Uh, and they would like just ship people off to these fields and have them line up and shoot them all with one bullet not to waste ammo and like Mm. they keep on even like to today they keep on pulling up bones from this giant field because it's just this massive killing field and i like i don't know much about it but yeah that's my dad telling me about him going and seeing it and it just sounded horrible because the only the only uh, real big death things that I can think of when it regards African history is uh, I used to I used to know the Zulu word for it, but I I've forgotten that. But it, it's called the crushing in English, and basically the uh, the Zulu Empire expanded to control all this area, and then they kept going, and as they kept going. They kept pushing people further and further back. And so, you know, all these tribes would flee from the Zulu because they didn't stand a chance. And then they would enter other tribes' lands. And then those tribes would start fighting. And it just started a chain reaction of fighting, trying to flee the Zulu. And it resulted in the death of, I think it was around 2 million people. Oh just boy, because that's... the Zulu wanted more territory. Again, it's that's all people want. It's, men only want two things, and it's fucking disgusting. Territory and women. The Fair society enough. You live in. Man, can, can you believe that ancient Zulu, that uh, historical Zulu society was like that? That's ridiculous, man. Ah. <sighs> Taking a very abrupt turn from uh, death and uh, from the, from uh, historical genocide, I want to talk about video games. 
Yes, I love those. Those are really good. You played a video game once. Dude, those are crazy. Have you heard of this one? And you like do stuff. It's in called. It? It's called Roblox. I, I have know. you played it? Dude, Sick. I love Roblox. <laughs> but it, it it was kind of interesting. Uh, older video games definitely have their charm when trying to play them. Like I, they're jank. Like something that I've always super been interested in is like how stuff is made. And older video games were so interesting for like the Famicom and oh. like the NES because yeah, you I, only I have... had so many like sprites and characters and colors on everything. So yeah, you had to... well, that, that's one of my favorite facts about Mega Man is that uh, Mega Man is made of two sprites actually. One sprite for his face, one sprite for his body, because his sprite had too many colors if uh, they didn't do that. <laughs> but, so uh, if you, so, you know, old old uh, Famicom and NES would have sprite flicker when too many sprites mm -hmm. were on screen. Yeah. So this face would flicker independently of the body because they're different sprites. Oh yeah, I hilarious. see that in a few videos. But... So that, that, that was, I, that's hilarious, I love that. Uh, uh -oh. Like the main way that people or designers would get around that would be that's why they have so many like head and hand bosses that don't move because you could just move the arms and the head around. Yeah, and yeah. Have as, as sable background. Yeah. As the body. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I have an actual Famicom, not an NES, a Famicom specifically. So I, it, 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 <laughs> I applaud it's you. interesting. Um. The uh, it's kind of interesting because there's all these Japanese games that never came to America. Well, one of my favorite examples of a stupid uh game that never came to America was it's called like Gorby No Pipeline, in which you play as a um a person trying to build pipelines from Tokyo to Moscow to give Gorbachev the uh for the who was the current leader of the Soviet Union. Uh, water. That was what? the goal of the game, to build pipelines to Moscow to give Gorbachev water. Wasn't there one, like, old NES or uh, Famicom game where you, like, just designed sweaters and... Or is that on a computer? But you would design sweaters and you just send them into oh. Nintendo and you could, like, yeah. get them sent that, back to you. That was a Mario game. Yeah. Sweater designer Mario, <laughs> Mario game. Yeah, that was PC. Game. Yeah. I think. I mean, I, I don't I think it was a Famicom game, but it's entirely possible. I, I, w I would agree with you that it's probably not, but... Oh, Famicom had some interesting, uh, there's... I don't know, it, it's interesting to try and buy games for the Famicom, because there's so many RPGs, and since I don't oh speak Japanese, I, I can't play <laughs> any of them. Exactly, like a platformer is universal. Yeah, I can play but... stuff like... Oh god, it's even worse when you find a game that's like, oh, this looks interesting. How much does it cost? Six hundred dollars? That's funny. Gee, that's ten, ten times the price of the new AAA games. Yeah, no, I was like, oh, hey, uh, this, I, I saw a game, I was, it's called, like, Moon Quest. I thought, oh, this looks neat. It's like, it's like a Prince of Persia inspired game, but it's actually good. I thought, oh, this looks neat. I'll get a copy of this. No, you won't. 600 bucks for the, uh, for an unsealed, for like a loose copy. And I'm like, nah, no, nah. Please. I'll look up a walkthrough. I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just emulate it. As the Mario 64 music comes on in the background, I have, I have bought like, I think three different types of Mario 64 and I have not like completed any of them. I have not fought the first Bowser fight on any of them. What? You have to, man. I love Mario 6. I haven't beaten Mario 64, I'll be honest, <laughs> but I love it. It's such a fun game to just play. I, 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 I have to say, I really love, like, Mario 64, those Mario 64 conspiracy f theories. Those were my jam. Those oh, are dude. awesome. Like, you know all those, like, creepy Mario 64, like, uh -huh. developments? Personal I love copies and whatever? Yeah, personalization. I love that stuff. I, that's so fun. Uh, there's a YouTuber I, like, am a big fan of, um, Simple Flips. He was a huge speedrunner. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I've did, heard of him. Yeah, and he does a bunch of, like, ROM hack competitions. And he's done so much in, like, Mario 64. Yeah. So I that's how I get most of my Mario 64 media is just through him because 
is. Yeah, I, I don't know much about like the modern Mario 64 community, but I, I just love the game. It is a like for the like to today's to today's standard, it is not a beautiful game. Like it is very. It doesn't look unpolished, good, but it's so much. But, like, it's so fun to it's, play. Yeah, the movement and everything is so just pristine and hasn't like lost uh, any feel yeah. or much feel to it. Both of us can't aim. <laughs> exactly. The the only Get difference. Get the laser is shots, it. man. But yeah, I, I I know I was talking to Neg, and he's just like, oh, you, you just click on their heads, and I'm like, I'm trying. That's <laughs> I'm doing that, man. What That's you... what I'm trying to do. It's a crossbow. Crossbows don't travel instantly, man. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Part, like, I think the N64 and the GameCube era, like, I know it's not, like, a whole era, but that was a few decades. Yeah. Still, like, top tier, like, for gaming, yeah. that was so good. <laughs> yeah, I, like I the... think, like, I think the Nintendo 64 era was my favorite era of video games. I just love those games. Because, and even, like, not on the 64, you also got, like, the PS1, I believe sega saturn i'm a Se yeah it's ps1 sega saturn uh 3do <laughs> and it's like you these are all things that are like most of the games on there were made by people who really wanted to make games that were fun well, and engaging yeah like i i have a sega saturn no one talks about the sega saturns i love my sega saturn sega saturn has such a good collection of uh fighting games if you're into those Oh man, I, I got the, want to be, but I'm just like not good. Super Street Fighter 2, uh, Samurai Showdown 3, Virtua Fighter 2, all this stuff is on the Sega Saturn. Damn. And it's just it's just great on that because the Sega Saturn controller is like butter in the hands. It's so good. Is that I'm trying to think of that. Is that the one with the six buttons? Yeah, the six buttons. Yeah, that would be great for fighting games. Holy crap, that would yeah, be. Yeah, I have I have a. Right, so got Super Street Fighter 2, great fun. But yeah, I I never hear anybody talk about the Sega Saturn. I yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a shame because it's such a cool. It's just such a cool thing. I mean, it, it was way overshadowed by the PlayStation, which oh, in course. itself is a great system too. Yeah. Um, but how? I don't know, I think Sega Saturn's the one I've played, like, the most of, probably. Actually, I've played a lot of PS1 games. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I, I, like, got my first, like, video game console thing when I was 10, and it was the Nintendo 3DS, and up until then, I had been very sheltered from, like, video games, only playing them at friends' houses, so... Yeah. I don't know, I... I, I I remember I, I I got my 3DS Super Mario Land, Super Mario 3D Land. Oh my goodness! I yeah. have, have like 200 hours in the game. I adore. Yeah, I, I formed a religion around around that in car trips. Like, and again, it's not an amazing game, but like, it's it, it's a fun game though. It's and that's yeah, what matters. It was, it's not it was, groundbreaking. It's not revolutionary. It's not gonna make anybody who's played a video game before go wow. Oh, but it's just such a fun game. Yeah. I mean, even now, in the stance of Mario games, it's not too exciting. And not to be, like, back in my day, but, like, now games yeah. are very much a little copy and paste and a lot more bland than they used to be. Because, yeah. like, now we have Call of Duty 4 Black Ops, and I'm like, I... You only you added play, new maps and new well, you guns. play you play n enough as much NES games as me, and you will definitely see the copy and paste tool being used. Oh, especially for like the illegal copies where they just yeah the eight hundred Chip and Dale rescue squad. Uh, there's like a, yeah, ch uh, there's like uh, I think they used like there's a Chip and Dale ROM hack was used for like a Mario game, Cl like clone yeah. sewed in China. Oh, it's always hilarious um, when you find like all these like game prototypes. Like somebody found a uh uh prototype copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 um, in like uh, it was discovered by this guy named Simon Way or something like that and he's he's like a guy from like I, I can't I think he might have been like from Taiwan or someplace like that and he and he like 
he's a Sonic fan, and he found, like, this random Sonic boot, like, game, like, in this Ch Chinese street market, and it was actually, a, like, a lost prototype of so uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 from, like, a s cartridge that was stolen at a Tokyo Toy Fair and then reduplicated on a Chinese market or that something like that. such a odd, like, concept to hear. Because you would but never he, hear that, that nowadays. Yeah, but, like, they stole it from a uh, New York toy fair, and it got, re like, copied across, like, the Chinese market, and it was found, and now it's, like, one of the earliest prototypes of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 we have, which is hilarious, in my opinion, <sighs> that somebody just stole this for, like, their kid or whatever. What is, like, the most slept on game in your opinion and it doesn't have to be like by sales or like anything but game that you think needs more recognition that's that's a tough question there's like a, a lot of games i personally like like uh just the other day i was playing this game uh getsu fumaden for the uh famicom it's like it's made by konami so you know it's made by it's the guys amazing. who made Cat yeah it, it's made by uh i think i'm pretty sure konami yeah castlevania it's like oh, it was it's it's like in the style of Castlevania made by the people who made Castlevania but it's only in Japan and oh. it, it, it's it's really good but I don't know if I'd call that like a major sleep on game it's good but it's not like oh god you need to play this game not like an older game and I know like some of my friends watching this are gonna be like oh my goodness he's talking about it again but battle block theater Oh yeah, I, Battle Block Theater. I love. I just have so many good memories playing that game, and it was I, made I, by the people who made Castle Clash. Castle yeah, no, Crashers. I, gonna, I, I gotta say, I, I never, I never actually. I, I know you're gonna say what, but I've never actually played Battle Block Theater before. Oh, if it was, you can get it for like three. If you can get it for three dollars, it's worth the three dollars you can get it for. Yeah, it's, I, you play it and I, you're like. Yep, this was good. Yeah. I played so much Castle Crashers when I was little, though. Exactly. God, and I, I love the art style I, and the humor throughout it. It's just like, yeah. it has I remember, its like, place. I remember inviting uh, friends over, to inviting uh, like a friend over, and we just like looked up on the internet how to do it, and like us grinding for new swords in, battle, in uh, Castle Crashers. Mm -hmm. It was such a fun thing, playing Minecraft, like... Playing, uh, we played those. I played those on the uh, like the Xbox 360. Yeah, my we got one of those. And so, black Xbox 360, no Halo, but I played like Castle Crashers. I played a uh, Lego Indiana Jones and Lego Star Wars. I played all the Minecraft. Games like... it's... Yeah, I, I I think we had Halo. I, I actually I don't think we had Halo Four, but I. I know. I remember. I, I my dad had Gears of War like three or something like that. An odd game. <laughs> yeah. Um. I remember we had two human. I remember that. That game's so stupid. Um, I assume you're more of an indie game fan than a huge like. Big you see, company. I can go either way. I mean, I I just like games I like. I mean, I, I, I prefer, like, older game companies over, like, older indie companies, but a lot of the newer games versus yeah, I, newer I, indie I, games. I guess I have to like indie games more because I like retro- I like old-school platformers the most. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where my, like, my most controversial ver video game opinion comes, is that I like- I like lives and continues. I like those systems. I thought they were neat, but they aren't very popular. So no, and like I understand why they yeah, aren't popular. Why they're but not for back popular. then, of course, yes, those were like well, the I, thing because you I, need I, to expand a ten-minute game into a yeah, like few but, hours long game. Yeah, but I like them. That's just I don't know. I liked it. I, I it's a system I enjoy, but I respect it not being there. But <laughs> it just makes a I, game I more it. enjoyable to like not yeah. restart from the very beginning after you die. Yeah. Much. Well, that's the thing is that usually continue systems get greatly exaggerated because even something as cruel as grueling as Castlevania, once you game over, it only sets you to the start of the level you you died at. Mm -hmm. And 
well, actually, so Castlevania is divided into stages, and then within those stages are levels. And so when you game over, you get sent back to the start of the stage. When you die, you get sent back to the start of the level. Yeah. It's just a distinction that I feel like should be mentioned. I like. Well, I, I even like Mario 64's life system, where you don't, like, di when you die and lose all your lives, you don't, like, get sent back anywhere. It just, like, means, oh, you've died and lost all your lives time to just restart you back here yeah. at the castle ground yeah i don't know it's just i just enjoy um lives and continues it's not a good mechanic i acknowledge i just like it <laughs> yeah it's like a uh, friday the 13th on nes that game is one of the worst video games i've ever played and it's one of my favorite nes games it's a so game bad doesn't have to be well made to be a good game it's not a good game. Let me stress that. It's a bad, bad game. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's and like... stupid. It's so charming, though. Exactly. Like, Jason, because it's Friday the 13th, so Jason in it. And Jason is, like, purple with a blue mask. And that's just hilarious. Purple guy? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. It's the man behind the slaughter. Oh, that just makes me think of, like, FNAF. I remember when I was, like, a cringy Five Nights at Freddy's fan. Word? Everyone was... A yeah <laughs> i still am no oh uh, i remember being like a I, I was a huge fan of uh five minutes at freddy's then i was a big fan of undertale oh then those a... like were hand in hand if you were a fan of FNAF, yeah. you were a fan of undertale yeah it's weird how much over i guess because everyone in those communities was literally 10 years old and it was like they came out nearly exactly the same time, 2014 yeah. for each of the first games. Yeah, no, uh, Undertale's 15. Oh, the more you uh, know. Two, 2014. God, I was just like sitting here and I, I was thinking like, uh, God, Undertale's over five years old. I can <laughs> feel my bones withering away. <laughs> Going disintegrating to dust. No, well, wouldn't it be six years old currently? Yeah, I know. I said over five. Um, oh, sorry. It's fine. I don't mind. Uh, but it's just like, oh, my my bones. Where are they? <laughs> it's like now kids are doing the instead of using like their thumb and their pinky finger to do the phone symbol, they use just their yeah. flat hand. Yeah, oh man, I I still do thumb and pinky finger when I'm oh, same. Tell if... same. Uh, that's a phone. I remember I had a friend come over, and he... we have a landline phone in my house, right? And he said, I want an old phone like this. And I said, this phone is younger than you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like from 2007. I think rotary phones, like, I know they weren't super practical, but I think they are, like, functionally pretty interesting. They're pretty neat. I've I've used one once. They're yeah. They, they they're not intuitive. They're not very intuitive. They I know how they work. They're just not neat to use. My my favorite fact about rotary dials is that um what the fir one of the f the first video game that we uh really one of the first video games that we know of is mm -hmm. um Oxo, or it, it was called North Knots and Crosses. It's a it was uh made it for a British computer. Yeah, I've heard. Um, of yeah, and, and the, you controlled the game with a rotary dial. That, like, as a controller, that sounds so interesting to use. Yeah, well, you think about it, because there's nine, there's nine numbers on a phone dial. There's nine positions in a tic-tac-toe game. Oh, uh, Each okay. response to position. Yeah. So it's like, kind of a neat thing. Now, I think there are some really interesting controllers out there, because I... Yeah. I play a rhythm game with a mount with a pen on a tablet. Like, huh. if you told me, if you told people back then, yep, we're gonna be drawing to play rhythm games. They'd been like, You're I, crazy. I, I kind of, I want to buy, I want to get a drawing tablet. I just don't know what to get. I mean, I would, don't get like an expensive one, but if you can get like no, a fifty dollar one, they're fine. Yeah, I don't use well, it for drawing ever because I'm. Yeah, not well, that's an the thing is, I, like I. I used to draw, and I used to draw a lot, but I kind of stopped drawing for a long time. And, and I would definitely prefer to do uh, art, like, digitally than I would prefer to do art physically. Like, I, I just know this about myself. But I, I haven't really done digital art, so I, I kind of want to get into it, but I just haven't. My question yeah. now is, who, who joined the call? 
Ah. Hello. Who would it be? It's uh, Nex. Oh. Mr. The Nexican. Hello, Mr. The Nexican. We're having a podcast S recording. Yeah, I haven't spoke yet. <laughs> I, I was gonna mention that. You've spoken a little, gonna... but I mean, I did. if you just want to be along for the ride, nobody's stopping you. Okay. And unless, what? if you want to interject, oh, what was that? Speak again. Why? Uh, Why? Okay, what? Never mind. You can you can shut up then. <laughs> but um, yeah. I, what were we like, talking about? We're talking about like older games and controllers and such. Yes, yes, yes. That's correct. I'm just, I'm too forgetful. This is this is what happens when you get old at the right old age of fifteen. Oh my goodness, no! I'm so old. I'm ancient, I, just like. I have a driver's test soon. What am I gonna do? Oh lord, I have a driver's test soon. I'm so old. I'm gonna be a male stripper. So you're gonna be a male stripper? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right then. How long have we been recording? I support you. Oh, nearly Take an, an hour. hour. Yeah. We've well, been talking. We've been talking for like a few oh, hours at this yeah, point. Yeah, we've been talking for a lot longer than the podcast thing has been going on. But I might end yeah. it here. Oh. Thank you for All right, bye. joining <laughs> me. Yeah.